shit. Uh oh. Pull it forward. Oh! This might be the hardest iron I've ever tried to hit. A little butter knife. Welcome back. It has been a while. Been a minute. Uh, we are still so in tune. We wore very similar shirts <laughs> yeah, today. There we go. Um, nothing like some small black and or navy blue stripes to screw with the camera. But um, uh, welcome back. It's been a while, man. We haven't yeah. shot in almost a month. Yeah, three weeks. Snow and my COVID experience. Oh yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> Aim that way, please. Yeah. Uh, so we've we've changed a lot in three weeks. Uh, obviously, the bay hasn't changed, but you guys are seeing a slightly different view. The screen's behind us. That's probably going to be more permanent. Mm -hmm. More importantly, we made some changes from what you guys are seeing. Yeah, what it's coming through on. We have uh, upgraded the camera quite a bit. Uh, yeah. Looking all pro. Hopefully. <laughs> more importantly, the audio, which it's the same audio setup, but now we can run up to four mics at a time. So when we get more guys in here, we don't have to use a shotgun mic. We can continue to use our wireless lapel. So, but with that being said, I don't know how you were able to get your hands on one of these. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a good one. It is a it's the it's the RF Proto that the, iron that, that looks Ricky's like a little hitting. copper baby. <laughs> yeah, and it is skinny. It is very skinny. So we've got our hands on the like you just said the RF prototype. Um, mm -hmm. Probably one of the smallest heads. It was designed in conjunction with Ricky Fowler. Yes. I think they said 30, 33 models is what they went through over a year. Um, wow. Got the copper finish and it is, uh, Small. It, it's as blade as a blade gets. It, uh, I kind of laughed and was telling people that it's like, it's like a brand new club going back to 1970s style yeah. of a blade. Exactly, minus the copper part, but yeah. yeah. Why don't you go ahead and hit them with the, uh, with the info. So yeah, so like we said, it's a co-design with Ricky Fowler through Cobra Golf. Um, they went through 33 different models over a year to get it. And then kind of the finishing touches that Ricky really put on it was that copper finish. Um, things that you have going on there on the design and everything, they've got a tungsten weight that's inserted into the muscle back part of it down towards the bottom. Um, what we're doing with that is it's moving, they put that high density tungsten in there, so it's moving the CG right behind the hitting zone for the purest feeling shot. And what Ryan and I, I guarantee we're gonna talk about is when you hit it good, it feels phenomenal. When you don't hit it good, it does not feel phenomenal. It's the best feeling shank I think I've ever felt. <laughs> yeah. Um, other kind of cool stuff that you get, it comes with a commemorative box, picture of Ricky, all kinds of fancy stuff. It has what Cobra always has, is that Arcos Connect in it. Can I get them for less if I don't need the picture of Ricky? No, no. <laughs> and it is, it is basically one price. They are $2,500. It's a limited run of golf clubs, so they're not really going to change that price. The forging on it is milled. It's CNC milling. So, I mean, it's just as classic of a forged iron as you can get. The other thing that you will definitely notice on it is that the lofts, are 100% classic tour lofts. So yes. whenever you get that seven iron in your hand and you're used to hitting a seven iron. Standard. Yeah, 190 <laughs> because you've got a 28 degree seven iron, that thing is around 34 degrees of a seven iron. So it is. Some of us can still hit it almost 200 You yards. can still get it out there whenever your spin rate's down to 3,300. Hey. Just because I hit a knuckleball, don't blame, don't hate the player, hate the game. Yeah. <laughs> so I will say in the intro, we hit some shots, we shanked them. We did do that on purpose. It was some, it was a little joke, a little jokes, got um, jokes. With that being said though, I have toed and heel some, which granted that's literally, you know, one of the things I'd like to be curious about is <clears throat> if we took like a more traditional blade, like maybe my Homnus, mm -hmm. and measured, put the golf ball in the middle and measured what it actually was from the edge of the golf ball to the toe and the heel or the first bend in the hosel. Mm -hmm. And then if we did the same thing here, what that difference would be. And if we get adventurous, we might do that. It is, it's a little different. I would be willing to bet this. Oh yeah, head, that's going to be a lot smaller. It's probably significantly less. I mean, it's from, from toe to heel. I'm just sitting here looking at it. Maybe yeah. a golf ball and a half, so a golf ball and a quarter. If you're a blade player, it's amazing looking, but you have to be okay with, when you say is it a thicker or thinner top line, it's essentially a no top line. No. 
there's it's a it's 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 I would say the point of a pencil, right? That's as thin as you can really get in golf. Yeah. So I yeah. don't know if if you can actually see it on the it's beveled on off the, the back picture that we got. Yep. Yes, but it's beveled uh, basically around the toe and up the top. So it it is a little bit thicker behind mm -hmm. high on it, but they bevel it down to where when you're looking down, it looks like there is nothing yep. like literally a butter knife you're looking down at. Cobra, if you're watching this, I'm open to staff deals. Just I'm gonna throw that out there. It's it's. It's good. So what does the copper do? It's a finish. Well, I know it's a finish, but does it change the feel at all? I don't I don't believe so. Okay. Um, I think it makes it a little softer personally. It's it's just the finish on it. Cause I know Mizuno, um, Mizuno came out with that copper. Um, yep. They kind of released some of that stuff with the copper, but the copper was so soft that they actually made it out of that. And right. they, it's, it was too soft. So it wasn't really a finish. Um, Cobra has the um, the hot metal, uh, not the hot metal. Sorry, Mizuno. Um, Cobra has the uh, Forge Tex, and they put a copper finish on the Forge Tex yeah. also. Um, Give it a few more swings because you've got a lesson. <laughs> little toey. I mean, I am I am feeling exactly where that golf ball hits. So yeah, so. I mean, you, like you were saying, I mean, it's, it's as classic as a blade gets and you, you talk about instant, instant feedback. Yeah. You, you definitely get it, but whenever it is struck well, it feels so good. A little toe pull. So I'm curious of everybody out there, what, what clubs are you guys playing? Because we obviously get really excited about stuff like this. You know, it's we have a tendency to fluctuate to more of the cat, the traditional cavity back blade clubs, just because that's what I've played for my whole life. But I know a lot of people get really excited, like the P790s, if a new edition were to come out, right? Mm -hmm. I think here that this is a very difficult club to hit. It is. I mean, I'm I'm struggling with it right now. I hit my little toe poles. You done? Or you want to more? <laughs> So yeah, so that's, so here's, here it is right here. Whenever people say like, um, well, yeah, y'all are always hitting golf clubs and this, that, and the other, and y'all hit it great every time. Um, no, the golf clubs help you hit it great every time. <laughs> whenever. Yeah, they really do. You get something in your hands that's not forgiving. If you're ever curious how technology works in golf, hit, wait, if you, if you, if you can find one, these aren't the easiest things to find to Correct. hit, but if you can find them, try and hit them because it'll tell you real quickly what you should and shouldn't be hitting. Exactly. Um, and if you're, if you have, to, if you like to hit that ball down on that AOA, uh, you know, probably three to five degrees with something like this, mm -hmm. and you want to get those launch and that kind of stuff, this realistically is, is you have to hit it on the needle every single time. So you were, you carried that last shot 155. Mm -hmm. What do you carry your seven iron? And then, by seven. the way, we're hitting a seven iron with the- um, Modus 120 Yeah, the Modus 120. Um, so yeah, so my seven iron on a good strike is somewhere in the 73, 74 range. So that kind of gives you an idea, and I fell. Yeah, so that I mean, gives you an idea of what Aaron was doing, okay. and that last one he carried 150. A touch, a touch of a miss hit is an easy, 15, yeah, I was about to say, difference. so I hit it off camera quite a bit while I was waiting for Aaron to get his butt back in the bay. <laughs> I already tore that ball up. <laughs> and I was taking it to about 175, 180, which is pretty close to what I, I play now. Uh -huh. um, I'm probably a little more aggressive on my angle than you are. Yeah. I'm a little steeper, so this is really kind of, uh, you, know, you start diving into the intricacies of who this is really meant for. I'm a little steeper. I'm used to playing a blade. I like a small head. Mm -hmm. I think it makes me more consistent knowing that I don't have any wiggle room versus yeah. a big wide head. And so for, I think it favors somebody like me over somebody like Aaron. Yeah. Even though our golf games from a score perspective are pretty similar. It just, I don't, I, I don't usually hit clubs like that. Yeah, I strike the ball very differently. And so now you're getting into the intricacies of how small that head can get for a, like a player like me. I, I, I was telling him off camera, I'm gonna call Gabby. <laughs> and say, just hold one for a minute. Let me mull this over for a day, but for the love, don't sell out. Yeah. I don't think they're going to have to worry about that unless people just want to collect them. Yeah, because I think it is a, a limited a limited run of clubs. Right. Um, but even that, like in my iron, my blades now, that wouldn't turn as much as that did. No, I mean, it, it's, it, talk about who this club is for. This club is for a- Player. Very good golfer that strikes the ball very well and very consistently. 
This 100% is not for a high handicap golfer. There is zero I'm having to like really focus on that. There is zero forgiveness. Hold up. There is zero help with launch. Uh -uh. There is zero help with distance. No. There is... If you can't do it on your you, own. Whatever you do is what happens out there. Yeah, so, I mean, if you like the idea of this, it's gonna feel a little different, but the MIM Tour uh -huh. is probably where, yeah, like a guy like all Aaron. Forged, and it's and I have hit that and we have that and we probably do a review on it. It's a really good looking golf club mm -hmm. and it feels great. Yeah. But it is just- A little more technology driven into it. And it to has help that you out. little bit more forgiveness that I want. I probably should, but for some reason I perform better with something like this out on the golf course. Like, you can see a lot of my dispersion is a little bit to the right side of that green there. That's you're, not hitting that, you're not hitting that rope hook? I am not hitting that rope hook. <laughs> That's a driver problem more than an iron problem, but, and I've been working on it. That's, That's probably the best ball. one I've hit. It's still one, but I've been working on getting a little cut into my game, and that'd be a little cut. There, <laughs> final thoughts on that bad boy? On, on the L butter knife? It is beautiful and miserable <laughs> at the same time. So it's the epitome of golf. Yes, that is that is golf right if, there. If you're a 25 handicap and you're going to play Pebble Beach, it's the absolute worst or best round of golf you're gonna play being miserable for most of it. Mm -hmm. That you're, yeah. <laughs> it's the epitome of golf. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's it really, is. really pretty and almost impossible to hit correctly. So hard. I'm, I'm giving myself a lot of credit because I was hitting it pretty good. I was not. No, again. It's not necessarily a jab at any particular kind of player. It's just built for the very specific player in mind. Yes. And that's why this is Case a- Case in point, it's built for the man who built it, Ricky right. Fowler. So, and if you watch his swing games, it's a little funky compared to more traditional swings, yeah. but- it's, it's like, it's, this, this is kind of like I say, compare it with the um, Taylor Mades with those TW irons that yeah. came out. Like, Similar the golf idea. club is made for Tiger Woods. Now that one was produced a little bit more for the masses too. Yes. This is gonna be a slightly more expensive version and the run itself was a little limited. Also, if you see here, there's like a silver kind of part. This would be copper on the traditional club because mm -hmm. we have a fitting a head. Fitting head. Yeah. Um, we have a little bit of silver there. So if you do buy these, it'll be completely copper. If you see it in the B-roll. Mm -hmm. So, man. She's a beaut, Clark. That's gonna do it for the Cobra. I'm happy to get back on hitting some reviews. I know we've hit the Cobra, yeah. um, the Rad drivers. If you haven't checked that video out, do us a favor. Uh, give that a check. I, if you want to hit these, holler at the guys at yeah. 1611. Let us know. We can get it in. We'll get it in your hands and let you look at it. Specifically this one. Let you, <laughs> let you let it strike fear into your heart when you look down at it. I'm not going to lie. I don't I call it the ass pucker a little bit. Oh, God. Here we go. A yeah. little, little clench. Probably should do it more. Maybe I get some weight off. But um, it, it, it's not big. As you guys have seen the B-roll, there's not a room left and right of that golf ball. So. No. But yeah, check it out. It's a fun if, one to check out. If you're ever curious how good your ball striking is, hit one of these. Yeah, grab it and find out. You'll learn quick. real quick. Yeah. So, Do us a favor. Uh, it's been a while since we've recorded one, but I know we've got a few in the books, but the E9 Golf Podcast, go, go check, check out. that out. Mm -hmm. uh, there may be some videos coming up with our buddies at On The Fringe Golf. If you haven't checked them out, do us a favor, check them out. They're really all about the fun. Mm -hmm. We're more about the performance be interesting if we kind of squish those two things together. Merge and see what happens. Yeah, that's what you need is four people that talk too much in one room. Yeah, that'll be awesome. <laughs> and a lot of fun. Thank you all for checking in. I'm going to go hit this a few more times. Get after it. I'm not. Oh my God, that was the best one I've hit. I couldn't do that. Oh, I recorded it. Good. Look at this shit. I was about to say, it didn't go as far. <laughs>